first you need to investigate several different type of sequences. You might recall we have done similar problem in the part 2. Here we need to find which is convergent and which is divergent. Now how would we do it is, you will be given some values like given and a formula. Now looking at this formula you can say this is an implicit formula in the sense you cannot find the value of say A5 without knowing A4. The formula specifies 1.5 An minus 1. So this is N minus 1. What this means is you need to know the previous term to find the next term. And A1 will always be given in such cases. You can't find for A1. You can only find A2 or more. Now what is A2? It will be A2 is equal to 1.5. A2 minus 1 is A1, right? So A1 is 4. So 4 into 1.5 will be basically um, 6. And same way we can do A3, where we need to do 1.5 times 6 here. Because that's the previous term. It will be 9. A4 is equal to again 9 times 1.5. 9 plus 4.5 will be 13.5. It's 1.5 multiplied by 9 and so on. You keep on getting the values. Now you need to find about 4 to 5 terms. So you can see the first term, second term, third term. Your 5 terms are found out. And see the values. What are the answers? It's 6, 9, 13, 20.5. What is the pattern? It's keep on increasing, right? And if you go further, it just keeps on increasing. I mean, with just 4 to 5 values, you understand the trend. Now here if you graph this, see this is MCQ, you don't need to graph, but if you graph this up, the values are, you know, at the first value it's 4, it's something increasing like this. Okay, it's keep on increasing. So this is diverging, you will never come close to one value. See the graphs are not like this, it will just come towards one value or something, no. If it comes towards one value, say it will come towards 0 0.005 pi and something like that, then you call it convergent. It's converging towards a single value, right? Com convergent is coming together. Diverging means it just goes away. It just keeps on going away towards infinity, right? So that's why this is conver This is divergent. All you need to do is find few values and see what is the trend of the values. Now let's. Uh, this is the answer. Divergent. Let's look into one of the problem. Generally, this one will be convergent. Why? Because it's divided by. So as you divide, divide big and big number, what happens? It comes closer to a small number that is zero point something. So here what you do is, this is an explicit formula. You don't need to know the previous term. All you need to know is the current term. This is it. That is A1. A2 will be 5 by 10 squared. A3 will be 5 by 10 cubed. 5 by 10,000. A3 will be 5 by 10 to the power 4 and so on. Just put them in the calculator, you can get the answers. So over here, you can see it's 5 by 10, 0.5, now 0 0.05, 0, 0, 0.05, it keeps on going. This is by 10,000, so you'll have three zeros and then 5. So what is happening here? If you keep on increasing the values, you can see it's going towards extremely close to 0. So they are all converging. See the values over here are converging. See it might be like this and towards zero. So no matter what, all the values are going towards zero. Therefore, this is a convergent series or sequence. So this is it. Now, what about this same concept? Oh, we again just substitute the n values one, two, three. You get the values, answers, and then you can see what is happening here. Now here, you have 97, 73, 86, 58. Now you might think it's jumping up and down. See, it's coming closer. But is it coming closer to any value? Over here, you got 22, then 1. The jumps are, you know, not predictable. It's diverging. You can't tell it's converging or anything. It's again divergent. Convergent must be a single value. It must come close to it. Say now it was coming towards 1. It should be 0 0.99 or 1.01, .01, something like that. Here the values are just jumping. You can't consider anything. These are just uh, divergent series. Similarly over here you can see again divergent. Oh, no, look over here, sorry. They're all coming towards one value itself, right? Now what happens is if you keep on increasing. So I, I will tell you a test way to check this. Uh, just take your calculators. 
Now, even though if it is explicit or implicit formula, you can directly do it in the calculator. Now, you might be thinking, oh, I have to keep on changing one, one, one value, right? No, you don't need to do that. As long as you follow this method, 34, uh, 3 by 4, sorry, into what is this previous term, right? What is the previous term? Minus 64. Okay, that's the first answer, negative 48. This much you ought to do. Now, remove this minus 64 and put it as the answer. So what happens is every time you press equal to this answer is saved over here. So now it's minus 36. You can see these are the values we are getting. See over here. I just realized the answers over here are wrong. They all are minus. Okay, because there's minus sign multiplied, right? Minus sign will always remain. Over here they are clearly mentioned. It's all minus. Now you can keep on going further. See what is happening. As I click the values, it's going towards zero. See, it's all reducing. So I can definitely tell it's going towards zero. So this is how just check it in the calculator if it is uh, implicit, if it's the previous values. Explicit, you can make in different ways as well. Now over here, it's just, a, okay, over here again, you need the previous term. Same like what we did a while ago. Four minus, first time you put one and then just put answer and keep on checking the values. You'll get this answer. Over here now, this is not convergent. Look over here, the answer is three, one, three, one, three, one. So this is divergent because it's not coming close to a single answer. There are two values which is jumping. So if you keep on doing the values, it'll be just 313131. Three, one, three, one. So that doesn't help us. This is not convergent, it's divergent. Here again, find the values. As you can see, few values are enough. You can understand easily it's divergent again. Now here you saw some values again for B 1.6, but no, it's increasing. It is divergent again. You can see it's not coming to a zero or a stable answer. It's diverging. And what about this one? Okay, this one is re reducing. So if you check, let's check it in our calculators. So all you need to do is first time over here, you can put in the value nine. See, there is another way to start with the answer itself. You just have to press 9 equal to, okay? Now what happens is when you press 9 and equal to, the answer is saved as 9. So now when I use this, a n minus 1 is the answer that is 9, which I have to use, plus 3 divided by 2. So now what happens is when I press equal to 6, it's automatically stored over here in the answer. And it's 4.5 and it keeps on going. See, what are, what are the answers? Over here, it is converging towards 3. It's not towards 0, but it's 3. But still, you can see it's going towards 3.00. As I increase, it will finally only be 3. So this is why I can say this is converging towards 3. So it doesn't matter. It converges towards any value. It's converging. So it appears to be finite number towards 3. You can check it in your calculator. So that's how we solve that. Over here, again, please do solve the problems by yourselves. Over here, you can see it's converging again. It's converging towards 5. So how you can check this out? Take your calculator. Here, you do not need the previous term. All you need to do is type this as it is. See, there is no a n minus 1. It's only n. So consider that as x variable. Now, you can calculate it any value. So you want to calculate at 7, press 7. And that's the answer. Yes, that's correct. Now, same way, calculate at 50. What is the value you're getting? You're getting 5.12. It's coming closer to 5. Calculate at 100. What is the answer? Again, if I calculate at 1,000, a big value, you can see it is closing towards 5. This is how you can easily tell which is the answer. If it was a n minus 1, you have to put answer as the given equation. I mean, wherever a n minus 1 is there. But this is explicit formula. n is given directly. You can directly put this in the equation as a variable and calculate different n values. And this is convergent, converging towards phi. Please do solve the other problems by yourselves. Over here, all the worked out solutions are there. Here, it is converging towards 1. So you can see this. It's all coming close to 1. It's towards 1. And that's the end of the answer. Please remember, if it is coming close towards any particular value, it's convergent. Whereas, if it uh, randomly changes its values, then it's divergent.